guys, it is Carl Brown for Guitar Lessons 365.com. Have a great one for you today. One that I tackled a long time ago, but just the opening riff. I promise never to do that to you guys again. No more riff videos. Full song or nothing. So um, we uh, basically are going to go tackle the whole song today. Uh, you guys asked me to finish it. So um, we're going to be doing uh, the uh, every riff. <laughs> and solo and all that good stuff too. Um, and in the clean section of the song, um, on the original, I'm following the original recording pretty much for the whole track, except for the clean section. The clean section there is a lot of guitar overdubs. So what I do there is I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna kind of reference what he did on the live tribute album and, and that part. So, um, so it's gonna be half the live tribute album version of the song and then uh, for just that clean section. And then the rest of it's going to be based off of the original um, studio recording. All right, so just so you, so you know what I'm going to be doing there. So we will be covering all the parts, though. All right, but before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And ring the notification bell, please, so you'll know I'll release a new video. And very important, check out My Guitar Academy. If you like uh, what I do here on YouTube, it's a great way to support what I do here and keep, them, keep these song lessons coming. Um, uh, just by becoming a member of my academy. But in, in addition, by becoming a member of academy, you get full access to all of my guitar courses in the GL365 Academy. Courses covering complete beginner stuff to more advanced courses and technique and improvisation and ear training and theory and guitar tone, you name it. It's all over there. So please go check it out. Got a free seven day trial right now. So you just use the link in the description below to get your trial. So let's do it. Let's jump in. We're in standard tuning here. Um, and we have this main riff. I'm going to, even though I've already covered this, this main riff, I'm going to cover it again. I want to make this just a complete video so people, you know, you don't have to. So if you've seen that video, and you, you might have seen me teach this riff already, so uh, you might want to skip this part. So here we go. So uh, we're going to be playing this riff, kind of slide down here to an A power chord. And then you get this uh, rhythm going on the A. Now there's a little da 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 Doing those accents are what's going to help you kind of lock into that riff. Because if you're just going doesn't sound right and it kind of feels odd too so if you really do those accents like he does so we're just accenting the beat there so so when you have that power warp then the muted a is there um, you, 16th notes, and then we have this next chord. It's gonna be fourth fret on the D and the G together, and then with the seventh fret there on the B, and then take that up one fret. So we have this. Slide down the string, and then to, to a G power chord. A D power chord, and then so that's that open G to D power chord, right? So back to the third fret there with some vibrato. All right, so now the second time through the riff, we have a little fill at the end of it, as per Randy Rhodes usually does. So that fill uh, is pretty easy to remember, um, and while he's doing it, you're gonna have some pinch harmonics on those. So we basically have the first fret there on the B string. You're gonna pick it, then pull off to the open B. Do that three times. We're starting to get those harmonics on there for the fretted notes. And then we go over to the G string. You're going to pull off two to zero twice. And then the same thing, two to zero, pull off twice on the D. 
and then end it with the third fret there on the A. So all together, this is main riff right before the vocals come in. All right, so then the vocals come in and it kind of continues that riff for four times, but there's a little variation in there. So it sounds like this. Alright, so that is just that same riff, but you'll notice the second time through there. Instead of doing this, I did this. Which is just these harmonics of the 12th fret on the D and the G together. And then the 7th fret on the D and the G. And then All right, so, <clears throat> so it's just that little variation that's thrown in there. So that's the verse, and every single time, so the verse is basically that riff four times, and the second time through, um, instead of doing a, that, you're going to be doing that ending instead, the harmonics ending. So the verse is the same way each time in the song. All right, and then we have this pre-chorus, which sounds like this. back to that main riff. So that, I'm gonna be playing this G chord like this here. Cause it makes it easier to get to the, the riff in front of it. So um, we're basically, I'm borrowing this sec the third fret across the B and the G there. So I have the open G, open D, and I'm playing the third fret on the low E with my thumb, and then I'm muting the A string with that note as well, that thumb as well. So it starts with a couple of hits of that, and then we have this. So that's going to be three on the D. These are muted here. Three on the D, five on the G. So three, then five on the G, then back to three on the D. Then play six on the B, five on the G. Then over to the third fret on the high E. And then bend and release at the fifth fret on the low E. So we have this. So then you kind of repeat. So this third time through, though, you strum the G. And then we have this. So that's kind of, so you gotta have to, it's a little bit harder to do. So. Hit each one twice there. So it's the same things that we did before. Instead of this, we have this. Except this little ending, when you get to that, uh, the third fret on high E, pick that key. Pick that same picking, picking it twice. Then it comes down to this uh, sixth fret there on the B string, and then fifth fret on the G. So. You can actually hit that five just once if you want. Because you, you hit that once, so you can jump down here. So that is going to be playing the third fret there on the. D string, second on the G. So you play, play those together. And then after you do that, you're gonna grab that third fret on the high E, let them ring together. And then from here, we're just hitting the, I'm hitting the second fret there on the D string and the open G with it. 
to a D power chord. So we did. From there, end it with just that power chord at the third fret off the A, C power chord, and then the G power chord off the third fret of the string. So I have. Back to that main riff. So that sec so it's basically the second so when we started the song, we had we played that riff twice without the vocals. So I kind of consider like the that the main riff. And then the verse comes in, which is using that riff, but it's played four times there. Then we just had the pre-chorus. Now we go back to that main riff, which the way I describe it, at least to myself, uh, is that opening riff that we played instrumentally two times, except instead of that, that fill at the end, we have this fill. It's a good way to understand it. So just twice with that main riff, and then it ends with a different fill, which is just, just a trill here on the G string. So you play the open G, and just trill back and forth between the fifth fret there and the open string, then four. Two. All right, and then you kind of go back to the verse again. The verse is the same as the first verse, same pre chorus, same thing that we covered before. All right, and then we get to the chorus, uh, sounds like this. That takes us to the clean section. So, um, so this we got a, a couple of hits on the open A string, muted A, and then we're playing the seventh fret on the D, seventh fret on the G, and then the eighth fret on the B, and then resolve it just to that D major triad, which is just the seventh fret across those three strings. So basically taking that eight down to the seven on the B, and then to that G power chord. And then those same two chords, we're going to end it with a C power chord and a G power chord. So at the end here, we have this, the A power chord. Then three, two, one on the low E, and then that takes us to the clean section. So a very simple chorus riff there. All right, the clean section um, looks like this. Now this, like I said, this is the live version of it. So it's just kind of a, it's while I'm trying, he's trying to kind of approximate a little bit what's on the recording. Um, uh, so I think it sounds pretty good, the live version. So we're just gonna do that. So that's what I'm referencing here. So we have this. So kind of got that little ending there. So we have this, uh, starts with this D. So D power chord I'm holding there, open D, second fret on the G, third fret on the B. Hammer on the fifth fret, pull back off to three. Then we have this. 
So that's going to be the third fret there on the A, and you're, you're sort of holding a D major with these other fingers. So you play this third fret on the A, second fret there on the G string, third fret on the B, and then the third, second fret on the high E. And then you grab the third fret on the high E, and then the second fret there on the G. So we have this. All right, then second fret there on the A. And it's kind of just picking across the, uh, the play that second fret there on the A, and then play the open G, third fret on the B, and the high E, then back down to the G. Then. So that's the first fret on the low E string, which I'm playing with my thumb there. And then third fret on the D, second fret on the G, and then play three, one, zero on the B. So. And then we kind of do the same thing, except we're start with that D, hammer three to five, and then play the second fret on the high E instead of that. And then into the same chord, which is that D chord with the C in the bass. And then the same chord. I'm sorry, right there. We got that. That's right. And then. So it's a different ending instead of this F. We have this. which is, you're gonna be holding the third fret there on the D, second fret on the G, third fret on the high E. So you pick D, then the high E, and then pick D, G, E, so we have this. And then back to the D, back to the high E, and slide it up a couple frets. So we have this so far. Here's where the vocals come in. We have this kind of a abbreviated version of that riff here. With that. Same thing we started with. So through those first three chords, and then we have this. So that's going to be uh, a double stop here at the tw tenth fret there on the D and the G together. So pick that, and then hammer on. 10, I'm sorry, timer on the 12th fret on the G, pull back off the 10. And then over to the D string now, you're gonna do that kind of hammer pull twice there. And then pick 12 and then slide down to 9. So we have this. Oh, it says 12 on the A string there. So we have this. All right, so when you get to the nine, we have this. So that's, I'm playing the seventh fret there on the G and the B together. Hammer on the eighth fret on the B and the ninth fret on the G together. Pull back off to the seven. And then up to the 10th fret there on the B. Now we have this. So, this is based around just a G major chord here. So this is, but you're gonna wanna bar it. We have the seventh fret across the uh, top three strings, and then you have the eighth fret there on the B string. So first, you're gonna play that eighth fret on the high E string, then pull off to that seventh fret. pick across the quarter. And then move it down two frets. 
And what I did there is I played the chord first, which is now an F major. Hammer on to six, pull back off to five. And then he does that pull off on the high E again. And then he picks the chord. So he has. All right, then we are back to this. So it's the same three chords as before, and then we have this little riff. So that's one on the low E, then play three, slide up to five, over to three on the A string, hammer three to five on the D, then play three, slide down to two. And then we had this ending. So that is kind of starts the same as before. You hammer down three to five, but now slide up to seven. And then you get to pick across this chord. Seventh fret on the um, on the A string, and then play 5th fret on the D, 5th fret on the G, 8 on the B. So what is this? I'm sorry. And then we have this. So that's kind of a stretch. We're going to play the bar across the 3rd fret on the B and the high E, and then you're going to play you can play the open G underneath it. But what I'm playing is the seventh fret on the high E string. So you pick these three strings, slide down to the fifth fret on the high E, then just to the, the threes here, the double stop, and then hammer back onto that five, and then pull back off to the threes. And then we go to the F. So that's just kind of picking across the third fret there on the D, G, and uh, second fret on the G, and then third fret on the B. I'm, I'm sorry, it's third fret on the high E. And then you're gonna, so that's the same chord we did before, and then pulling off two to zero on the D. All right, so we're getting real close to the end of here. So we have this. Now at the end we have this. Back to the D chord. Hammer on three to five. Slide to seven again. And then back to this chord we picked across before. And while we're picking across, we'll kick in the distortion and we have this. Alright, so that's kind of takes us back into really, I think, kind of like a bridge riff. So we have this eighth right on the um, the uh, A string, 10th fret there on the D. So we have this. Now just move the note on the A string down to the seventh. Leave that note on the 10th fret there on the on the D string. Then regular power chord at the fifth fret, and then third, and then the third fret of the low E. And then we have this little riff that leads us into the uh, solo. It looks like this. All right, so this is gonna start kind of the same we did uh, before with the uh, chorus. So we have open A a couple times, and that little uh, move there that will sus four to the major chord of D. Then the open D, open G real quick. And then you play the fifth fret across the D and the G together, and then we have this. So that's just hitting the fifth fret on the A string three times, and then six, seven. So we have. It. 
Now the second time through the riff, a little bit differently. Play a little differently. So. So that's kind of muddled down there. It's kind of hard exactly hear what he's doing there. I know he goes to the open position. So he goes. So it sounds like he does something like that. So we have this. He grabs his chord briefly. And then he takes it to the G power chord. And then it sounds like he does something like that, like the open D string a few times the second fret there on the D, and then over to the second fret of the G to end it. So we have this all together, both parts together. D. And then that this, this last time, you just kind of hit the G power chord because it goes into the solo there. So let me play through the solo for you real quick, and then I'll show you how to play it uh, note for note. So here we go. stuff. All right, so this first uh, lick in the solo is like this. All right, so that's going to be a bend, some vibrato on it at the 18th fret on the B string. And then... So from there, we're going to play this kind of standard blues lick, the 15th fret on the high E string, pull off 18 to 15 on the B, then bend the 17th fret there on the G string, back to the 15 on the B and the high E, back to the pull off from 15, uh, 18 to 15, I'm sorry, there on, on the B string, so we have this. And then we do the bend of the 17th fret again, back to the 15th fret on the B, and then we go back. Kind of a quick little bend and release at the 17th on the G, pull off to um, 15, and then you play 17, 15 again, and then 17, 15 on the D. So we have this. From there, kind of quick little bend again, slight bend on the 17th fret on the G, kill it, and then play 15 on the G, and then, then a slow kind of half step bend at the 17th fret on the high E string, that kind of dissolves into like a, a trill between 15 and 17 on the B, I'm sorry, on the high E string. Then over to the 18th fret there on the B string. All right, now from there we have uh, kind of a, this cool little tapping lick, and then it just kind of goes into chaos a little bit at the, uh, at the end of this section. So it looks like this.
All right, so there, it sounds like he really does a really kind of like bending. I know he's doing this on a Les Paul, so he's got some kind of, he's really bending the pitch down there. Just really creating noise there toward the end. But the beginning of the lick is pretty clear. It's a slow bend to the 13th fret up there on the B string. And while he's doing that, he's doing a pick tap, a kind of a trill pick tap. Three frets higher at the 16th fret. At least live, then you hear you hear him kind of move his pickup a little bit. I think it sounds cool. So that's what you'll hear there on the live recording. And then we have he's doing a trill at the third fret on the uh, on the G string, and then he takes that trill across the third fret on all the bottom across the to the, all the way to the low E. Um, and then there's also a lot going on where he's really kind of bending things a little bit. And you hear a slide of the neck. So that part's kind of like meant to sound like complete chaos and noise. So um, this, what do you get here? Whatever you want to do, because it's just kind of, you can, I'm sure you listen to the recording and it, it sounds kind of crazy. So then we have this. All right, so that right there, we're gonna start, it's really heavily palm muted. We have um, 15, 13 on the low E. Then up, shift up to the 18th fret there on the low E. Then up to the 15 on the A. So you play, so it's kind of. From there, we're gonna play. 17, 15 on the uh, A string, jump over to 15 on the D, back to that 17 on the A. So here it is. And then from there, we just kind of go straight up through the scale. So that's just the standard G minor pentatonic. 15, 17 on the D and the G. 15, 18 on the B and the high E. Up to the 20th fret, there's a bend and release. Pull off to 18 there, so we have this. Then we have this. And that's gonna be 20 to 18 on the B string. Back to that 20, over to 18 on the high E, so we have this, and then back down to 2018 on the B, and then into a bend there, the 20th, a couple of bends with some vibrato, and the same thing at the 19th on the G string. So. All right, now we have a really cool uh, lick, it sounds like this. That's cool. All right, so what's going on there? Very repetitive, but you gotta make sure you get the right the frets right, and you gotta really palm mute it. So we're doing this, starting at the 10th fret here, I'm sorry, where it's the 10th position. We're 11th fret on the B, down to 10. And then 12, 10 on the G. So it's a four note lick that we're gonna be doing here. So you wanna do that uh, basically, uh, twice. Then just move everything down one fret. And then move it down one more fret. And when you move it down here, you, this lick's going to be starting here at the ninth fret on the beat. You're going to do it twice here as well. Play this. Alright, and now we continue moving it down one fret at a time, playing the lick just once each time. Until you get to the fifth fret. So we have this. All right, now that goes into this. Kind of, so we have this kind of a G minor lick. 
<laughs> bend at the uh, the uh, fifth fretboard on the G string, and then fifth uh, third on the B to third on the high E string. Pull off six three on the B. Then over to six on the G string. Back to the three on the B. Then pull off. Pick six, pull off five, three, and then pull off five, three again. So it is. Slide up the G string. So that's sliding up to the 17th fret there into a bend. Then play 15 on the B. 15 on a high E, pull off 18 to 15 on the B. Then it kind of sounds like it's, it's right here, it gets a little warble too. We have 17 on the G, and then up to the, the play the double stop here at the 15 on the B and the high E, I guess, together, and then we have the 17 on the B and the G together. Like that, that part's a little kind of, kind of erratic of the recording. All right, now we have this. So that kind of starts that kind of chorus riff again. And this fill is similar to the one that we did at the beginning of the song. It's just a little bit shorter. So we, instead of pulling off three times here off from one to zero on the B string, we just do it twice. And then just once on the two to zero on the G and the two to zero on the D. So. All right, then back to the riff. So that right there is. Bending at the seventh fret there on the G, and then play five on the B, five on the high E string, and then you're gonna play eight, pull off to five on the B, then six, pull off to five on the B. Over to eight on the G, back to that five on the B. And then pull off, pick eight on the G string and pull off seven five. And then back to the rim. So right there is kind of sliding up the G string and grab the uh, 17th fret on the um, high E string. And then bend and release at the 20th fret on the B with some vibrato. And then. Now we have a different lick here. So that lick, that little ending lick, um, the last new thing we, we need to learn here, is basically uh, back to that main riff again where we kind of play the riff instrumentally twice and there's always a fill at the end of it, um, like we did at the very beginning of the song and then a little bit later and now here towards the end. And that lick we're gonna be doing here, it sounds like he does, kind of pull, pulls off 20 to 17 a couple times. Then the same thing on the B. And then we start, what well, sounds sort of like a triplet pattern. So we have, we, so do that kind of pull off a couple times on each string and then start from here, the 17 on the B. One, you're gonna basically it's go three note pattern. You're gonna pick um, the 17th fret on the B and then pull off 19 to 17 on the G. And then now start from the next note down the scale, three notes down from that. So it's gonna be 19 on the G, pull off to 17, over to 19 on the D. Now three notes down from 17 on the G. So pick that and then pull off 19 to 17 on the D. And then the last one sounds like he just kind of goes 19, 17 here on the D to 19 on the A and kind of slide it down.
All right, and then that takes us back to uh, kind of the same verse again, same as the previous verse uh, that we had, and then the same pre-chorus. Um, it's just like this pre-chorus kind of start stops with us. Uh, And it just kind of starts, um, stops with the A power chord if you want to. Or if you want to do it that one so you can slide down. On it. Kind of sounds cool to do that. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's in-depth breakdown of I Don't Know by the great Randy Rhodes and Ozzy Osbourne. It's always fun to cr crank into uh, Randy's stuff and uh, hope to do a lot more of it in the future. All right, I'll see you guys again soon for GuitarLessons365.com.